Central banks will start cutting interest rates sometimes this year, most probably June, but some analysts expect even earlier than that. And what normally happens is interest rates start to fall. Therefore, the focus shifts to equities. Once again, better potential gains to be made. Sectors to watch this year will be the advertising industry with the U.S. presidential elections, but also the Paris Olympics that will surely be under the spotlight, but also the defense sector and international tourism expected to reel in record revenues fueled by this post-pandemic wanderlust, but also sky-high prices. We saw double-digit returns in 2023 for equities, and prediction for this year is a 6% average gain. Now, to bonds. As you know, bond prices and their yields have an inverted relationship, so when one is high, the other one is low, and vice versa. Prices were at their lowest at the end of last year, as yields reached pre-global financial crisis levels, so very high, and they slowly started to rise at the end of October. And they will continue to do so, despite what people may think. Bonds are usually seen as a very safe, low-yield type of investment, but this time around, it's not a bad idea at all to hold some bonds. Predictions for this country, Turkey, are also very good for 2024 for both stocks and bonds, thanks mainly to the overhaul of the monetary policy that was put in place by new finance minister Mehmet Shimshek last year. We're expected to enter a disinflationary environment sometime in the second quarter and see a stabilization of the Turkish lira. Now, about commodities, analysts don't really think there will be a particular trend on oil. Oil consumption will grow by 1% as economies recover, but higher output in Saudi Arabia and in America will keep oil prices below 85 dollars a barrel. Coal and gas use will edge up too, despite investors' doubts about coal. Britain and maybe Italy will close their coal-fired power plants, but Asia's cravings for coal will only intensify this year, according to analysts. Some interesting trends, though, on renewables energy. We will uh, hopefully keep a lid on energy prices such as power and gas, especially in Europe. At least 11 nuclear reactors will open this year, including new adopters such as Bangladesh and Turkey. Hydrogen investment is also climbing in Germany, Jordan and elsewhere. Something else that I think is interesting to watch this year is copper. Analysts say it could skyrocket 75% this year only as mining disruptions coincide with higher demand for the metal for the green energy transition. And finally, gold entered 2024 under pressure from a jump in the US dollar. Again, these two have an inverted relationship, but held its ground on expectations that the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates this year and also amid rising concerns over attacks on shipping in the Red Sea. Gold surged 13% in 2023 in the first annual rise since 2020 and is forecast to reach record highs in 2024. As for Bitcoin, highly unpredictable. But despite rallying last year, it could continue to soar as a first Bitcoin ETF is expected to go online sometime this year. It still could be a good entry point. There's a lot to look out for there, Ludovica. Thank you so much for that. Now, let's get more on this with Bob Iacchino in Miami. He's the founder and chief market strategist of Path Trading Partners and co-host of the Futures Edge podcast. Really good to have you back with us, Bob. Now, stocks have got off to a shaky start this year, especially on Wall Street. The so-called Santa Claus rally, which includes the first two trading sessions of the new year, didn't eventuate. So what's scared off investors so far? And do you see that sentiment changing? That's interesting. First of all, I do see the sentiment changing. What we saw last year in U.S. equities was a bit of a pull forward of the rally that would come based on Fed easings that are supposed to take place. The Fed clearly pivoted from a tightening bias to an easing bias, but their summary of economic projections, the SEP, which we all know as the dot plots, actually only showed three rate cuts while the market then priced in six rate cuts. Actually, for a couple of days there, the market had seven rate cuts priced in, with the first one being in March at almost 100% probability. As of this morning, that's cut back to about a 40% probability for that first rate cut being in March. And it's interesting when you look at, for example, the 10-year note, throughout 2023, the 10-year note had a lot of volatility, yet it finished unchanged. As I sit here speaking to you now, it's up 18 basis points for the year. And that's definitely going to be a drag on U.S. equities unless it turns around. So I think the market is getting a little bit of a, a shock of realism that the Fed is not going to cut rates six times. 
They may cut three, they may cut two. And as Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkin said this week, they may actually hike. So the market uncertainty about the direction of the U.S. Central Bank, while it clearly they've pivoted to an easing bias, is kind of pulling that rug out from under the U.S. equities that we saw at the end of last year. Interesting, because the likely good news that many are expecting this year is falling inflation. And just as you mentioned, that the Federal Reserve, along with other central banks, will begin to cut interest rates. So it doesn't sound like you're as optimistic as some of those other uh, bullish predictors of rate cuts this year. So what time frames are we talking? So I'm optimistic about U.S. equities in general, but when you look at the type of performance from last year, specifically in the NASDAQ, we don't see repeats of those. When you look at history, you generally don't see 25, 30, 35 percent in the NASDAQ and then a repeat of that the next year. So I'm optimistic about U.S. equities. In terms of the rate cuts, I believe there will be a rate cut, but I think you may not see anything till potentially the third quarter. You know, this morning we just got U.S. non-farm payrolls figures and the unemployment rate was unchanged and wages rose. When you look at wage growth in the U.S., it's actually running at a level that is equivalent to 5% inflation, not 2% inflation. Now, that's just a services part. The goods inflation has not only declined, but has turned negative. So that's balancing it off, allowing core PCE to sit around 2.8%. But when you see wages and services inflation running at about 4.8% on a three-month annualized basis, you're talking about a push-pull scenario for inflation. And as long as that persists, and as long as U.S. central bankers don't change their tune from saying we need to see some easing or some slack in the labor market, which we haven't seen yet, they're not likely to rush to cut rates. Now, crypto has had a strong start to the year. Bitcoin has marched past $45,000 for the first time since April 2022. Ether has also soared. Uh, this has been driven by the prospect of exchange-traded spot Bitcoin funds being approved sometime this year. Do you think this will be a good year for crypto? I think it could be. One of the, we've all heard the market cliche, and, and I really dislike market cliches, but the buy the rumor, sell the fact. And it could be that crypto actually has a little bit of sell-off when we actually get some of those ETFs uh, approved. And that likely will happen. It's a very high probability. The market's pricing that in is somewhere around 87% that there will be approval of these ETFs. But I do think it'll be a positive year for, for Bitcoin and Ether nonetheless, simply because once a couple of those do get approved, you will see money flowing into the, those ETFs, which will just, uh, by its nature, increase demand for the actual asset. So I do think it'll be a good year. Again, I'm not sure about a repeat of last year, 160% to the positive for Bitcoin. It may not repeat that. But Bitcoin is definitely on a trajectory of becoming a real asset. The question we're going to learn this year, and I don't have the answer for this, is it actually inverse or uncorrelated to the NASDAQ? It broke that correlation a little bit last year, but the prior, uh, say, 18 months, Bitcoin was very correlated to the performance of the NASDAQ. And a theory I have for that is the same people who would invest in tech stocks, I'm one of them, would invest in a technical technological advance like the blockchain or like Bitcoin. So if you see the NASDAQ start to suffer, perhaps on the idea that the Fed's not going to ease rates as much or even at all, then if Bitcoin falls off of that news, then you see it has not broken that correlation. And that's going to be a little troubling as we go through the year.